Hey, I'm Karen Hutton, and I'm so excited to contribute an episode of Perfect Inspiration. You know, I'm known mostly as a landscape photographer, but I love architecture too. And that's going to tie into what I'm talking about in a little bit. So when I was thinking about what to share, I was drawn to the origins of the words to inspire, which in its origins meant to breathe into, in the sense of imparting a truth or idea to someone. And I couldn't help thinking, so what is it that breathes life into our processing? How do we give it a recognizable style that we can call our own? See, I think an important aspect of all this is that the more fully formed we are as people, the more naturally we imbue our work with an imprint of our own point of view. Now, that seems natural enough, right? Our point of view is our way of seeing life and the world, so it should show up in our processing, since it's as unique to us as our fingerprint or our voice. But does it? I mean, does it show up in your processing? Okay, so here's some stuff about me that's going to affect how I process the photo I'm going to show you in a minute. I love light color and texture. I love to be inspired and uplifted and require a hearty dose of that daily. I have a vivid imagination. I love movies, awesome stories, and a cinematic approach to pretty much everything. I demand a good ending, cannot tolerate negative people, and know that we create our own reality with our thoughts, intentions, and the things we dwell upon. I've had really hard times and really good times, and I do know the value of having a vision and moving forward. And it's important to me on many, many levels that my photographs reflect those things too. So, cut to this image. I chose it because it contains most of what I was just talking about in its composition and, soon, its processing. And uh, it's an HDR. I created it in Photomatics. A lot of people want to see what the original raw photos look like, so I set them up over here. So there we go. I, I shot seven uh, photos. I could have done this with the light the way it was that day. I could have done three. I could have done five. I did seven. And this is the image that was created. In the composition itself, it has these leading lines. And it goes into this, you know, it's soon to be even more mystical forest because I'm all about the journey and I'm all about going from where I am now into something better. I'm about creating my own world and the one that I want to live in is one that is a bit like this forest is going to be, kind of magical and mystical. And although my life doesn't quite look like this bridge, there was a time in my life that it kind of felt like that. So this in a way could be my autobiography at certain times in my life. And these rails are my ride out. So, in some ways, it's a really personal image, and I'm going to show you how I think about it, because I think a lot of times with processing, it really comes down to how you think about it. It isn't just a matter of sliders and what does so-and-so do and how do I create that effect, although those things are important. But at the end of the day, once you've mastered your tools, it really comes down to how you think and feel about your art. And for me, the first stop is on one software's perfect effects and glow. Of course, those of you who may know me or my friends who know me know that yes, glow would be Karen's first stop. So effects, glow. The one that I'm gonna choose is Hollywood Glow and you'll see why. Okay, so here's Hollywood Glow. I love Hollywood Glow. But it's pretty strong in the glow department, and it applies the effect globally, which I don't want to do. So I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to press B on my keyboard as the shortcut for brush. Choose invert so that I lose it, but I can paint it back in now. And what I'm going to do is go up here to the opacity of the brush. Bring it down to about 80% and start in my favorite place, which is right down in here, the place that goes into the magic world. And uh, then I'm gonna make my brush bigger with the right bracket, paint in my wonderful magic forest, and I'm gonna add a layer to my stack. And I, what I really need is now, is I wanna start working on the color and the depth of this photo. So I'm going to choose Orton Here's a Who. I love this effect. And as you can see, it's pretty strong. And you're like, why in the world does she want that? But wait, it gets better. I go over here and I'm going to choose Options. I'm going to choose in the blending mode, in the blending options, Soft Light. 
and boom, I've got some bass. Now my opinion about a lot of HDR images is one of the things that makes them look not quite believable sometimes is they, they lack the depth. I call it they don't have enough black in it. That's just kind of my sort of slangy way of saying they need some depth, they need a base, they need to be anchored. This is a bit much, but this is the idea. Um, my color is looking better. I've got some depth now in the textures of this bridge because I want it to feel more dramatic. Um, even my my magic portal here is beginning to look a little more uh, Oz-like. And so I do love this. But what I'm going to do with this is work on the shadows a little bit. So I'm going to add a layer. And we're going to go here into Effects. We're going to go to Brightness. And we're going to choose Shadows Lighter. Because I want to raise the shadows up. Boom. I like that. I like it most over here. It's it's kind of letting it breathe. Because I do like the thing to be anchored, but not like ball and chain anchored. I want it to also be able to breathe and be open and sing a little, but have some good bass notes. So I like it. But over here, to me, it feels a little bit heavy. So I'm going to add another layer and do that again with Shadows Lighter. And of course, over here, I think it gets a little too light. Uh, over here, it's looking better. So once again, I'm going to press B from my brush. I'm going to go Invert. Make sure that my brush opacity is at 100 and that my effect uh, 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 opacity is at 100. And then I'm going to just brush in some shadows, even over here a little bit. Make my brush smaller with the left bracket. And then I'm going to come in here and lighten up these shadows. I want the texture in the under pinnings here to show as well as there, there, and there. Where else is it feeling a little heavy? Mm, maybe even in here. I don't want I don't, I don't want to lose the shadows altogether, but I just want to be able to not feel so weighed down by them. Because you can't have light if you don't have shadows, right? So, very good. I like that. So now, just as I have gotten the uh, the shadows going, I want to get the color going a little bit. Now, metaphorically speaking, this bridge is metal. It's kind of crusty. It's got the uh, the vibe that feels like what came before. If I use my own life, boy, I can think of some times that looked a lot like this bridge. In that time, it looked even colder. What I just did here is I went up to my favorites because I had put brush cooler in my uh, favorites. So now I have my brush tool and I also have my opacity at 100. Now if I do 100, <laughs> ouch, <laughs> so we're not going to do that. We are going to drop the opacity down to let's say 20 percent. I'm going to make my brush a little bigger and I just want to brush in a little bit of coolness because you know silver is a cool color and it's completely legit to imagine that this is a a silvery look and I want it to feel a little colder of course I love color not to the point where it hurts but I do use color to make my point in my work and in this case I want it to be cooler I tend to run a little cold most of the time so the fact that something is cooler like this is something I'm typically going to want to get away from. So for me, uh, this makes this beautiful and textural and fantastic. But in my story that relates to me, I'm going to want to get out of here. <laughs> I'm going to want to go over here. So the cooler feature makes it even more so. The next, uh, I've got a couple more things, only oh, two more things that I do that I want to do with this. One of them is brush more color because and I need to make my brush 100%. In my recollection of this place, the fall colors were so, so vivid against the green. It was just phenomenal. Um, and that was, you know, one of the reasons I, I composed it this way, so that we just had this touch of it here, 
I wanted to feel like I was in it because I wanted to be able to relate to this and not be so far back that this was too far away. But I wanted the detail of the bridge and I wanted this splash of color here. So that's why I, I composed it the way I did. Let's see, where else do I want a pop of color? I think that's good. What I want to do though is test it and see if 50% is enough or if I want 100. I don't think I want 100, but I think I want around 80. That's good. I like it. Now, a little extra thing that I might do is turn the opacity of my brush down. I don't know, let's try 20%, make my brush smaller. And to add a little texture, a little depth to the trees, you see where the light naturally hits the tree. Uh, you could do this maybe with warmth also. I'm going to just do it with color because we're here. And I'm just going to brush in um, where the light naturally hits the tree and it's a little bit lighter because it gives it a little more depth. You feel more like you can sort of reach out and touch it. This tree is a little more even, but I can give it some depth, I think. Give it a shot. And then this tree I know needs a little bit more because it's just kind of dark. And I'm just trying to touch on the areas that where the light hits. So you have to start seeing light and shadow and uh, and touch it, touch on it that way so that you're actually, and I'm doing this really fast, but you get the idea. So there we go. So, oh, I like this a lot. Now this feels metaphorically very much like who I am, this path of going somewhere. And speaking of these tracks, I want to add a layer and brush warmer. I don't want more color necessarily. I just want the color that's there to feel a little more inviting because these are this is my way this is my road out and believe me in the times that I set my focus to envision a better life for myself I will tell you that uh, I kept focused on the rail out <laughs> there we go so I like that better I think I actually want this to be a little bit warmer because this is like the portal right it's a combination it's it's some of the some of the cool uh, because it's built of what was. This is the point at which what is going to be and what was blends. I mean, this is this is why I chose this image, because it's so literal. It's just easier to point at things and say, this is what this is. Not all of my photos are like that. Not all art should be like that. But it's kind of handy in this case to be able to see exactly what I'm saying. So all that came before is blended up in here in the within the cool and the warm, and it all changes and becomes the new world here. I just love it. It just covers so many bases for me. So I'm going to add one more layer because what I want, I'm a presenter. You know, I was an actor for years. I do voiceovers. I do photography. I present beautiful views of my world. And the presenting part of it is really important to me. So I love this image, but I want to present it a little better. So I'm going to use center spot normal. Boom. There it is my world and welcome to it. So it's got a little vignette action here. Uh, so things sort of fade out here and then they all point and lead and the bright spot is where we want to go. It's so maybe a little bright. I might drop it down to 80. Yep, something like that. I like that. I like that a lot. So there you have it. I'm going to apply and voila, there it is in Photoshop. So let's say you get it back to Photoshop and you decide it's a little bright. You can always go up here to the opacity slider and drop it down a little bit or take it down all the way and slowly bring it back in until you like it. It just has to line up with how you feel, what your point of view is, what you're trying to get across. And every time you show up and do this, it starts to become your signature. So that's how I think about it. And this is a nice image to show that to you. And I hope that it added something to your processing because processing is so awesome. It's so much fun and I hope you enjoy it. And I hope you got something out of this. Thanks a lot for listening. <laughs> Bye.